Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we check out Tape Face from Kive Audio. Tape Face version 3 recently came out from our friends over at Kive Audio, and today we're going to talk about not only Tape Face, but what tape actually did to your audio. There was a bunch of different things that would happen when you were pushing signal into tape. If you would push it too hard, it would even get into saturation and compression. And we're going to show you today how Tape Face can get us both that compression and the saturation as well as a couple other little things. So let's dive into the DAW and take a look. Okay, so here we are inside of our session. This is one that I've been working on and you guys have heard a few times. I've been working on it a little bit more and I thought it would be a really good example of showing what tape face can do and what tape can do to your sounds. We've talked about different kinds of saturation before and there will be a link in the description for that video. But now we're gonna talk about how tape would compress as well as saturate. When you would drive too much signal into tape, it's not like digital where digital has this cap. That's what DBFS is, full scale. There's only so many ones and zeros going in or out of your computer that can be handled by your converters. This is what clipping is. In the digital world, clipping is bad. Well, it's mostly bad unless you use it in a very creative way, but we'll save that for another video. In the analog days, when you would push into tape really hard, you would get compression because the tape would literally just start squeezing onto the signal being fed into it. And you would just oversaturate the tape or the track on that tape to then compress it. And then when you keep going, you do get that saturation. So we're gonna start off on our drum bus. And you can see there's really no processing going on in this session. All of my program drums are just from Steven Slate drums. And then my bus has nothing but tape face on it. And it's even off right now. So if we were gonna to listen to just the drums, they sound like this. Not bad, a good amount of room sound. We have the kick and the snare that have nice presence. Maybe we'll clean them up with some EQ. But right now, what we wanna do is I'm just gonna treat all of the drums because I wanna use that compression and saturation to my advantage. And then it's less that I have to do on the individual channels later. So on my drum bus, I have tape face. I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up. And this is Tape Face, it's version three, which looks very similar to the previous versions. Maybe a couple things are different here or there. One of the things is there's now different tape styles. So you start off by default with the white and red. Version two is the blue, and version three is this gray, gold, whatever you wanna call it. We'll go with gray. For now, I'm gonna flip back to the main red and white. But now that we're in here, I'm gonna make sure saturation is all the way down, and let me just because I was messing around with this earlier, I'm just gonna kind of revert back to default. I'm gonna take everything back to the way it's supposed to be. Now let's do a quick before and after of the default settings of tape face on our drums. I'll let it play without tape face on, and then after a bar or two, I'll put tape face in. And just listen, especially in the low mids, a little bit of love happens in the low mids. Also take a listen to the very highs. That's what the different ips or inches per second control in the middle actually handles. Inches per second on an analog tape machine was how fast the tape was going. Per second, if 15 inches of tape would go past, that's what 15 ips was. 30 was faster, 7.5 was slower. And this would manipulate the top end because the top end needed the room on the tape to stretch across more time. So when you actually compress it down and have shorter time, you lose some top end. So here it is, drums dry after a couple bars, we'll drop in tape face. So 
so you can hear immediately. There's this nice little scoop of those low mids kind of cleaning up some of the mud, and it does kind of reinforce our low end without really adding anything, and it cleans up our top end as well. It kind of rolls off some of those super highs. But like we said, we can change our inches per second and adjust how those highs sound. Let me do it again with tape face on, and I'll start in 7.5 and flip between 7.5 and 30. That will be the most drastic change you'll hear. But when we used to record drums, very frequently, we would use 15 inches per second. But here's 7.5 versus 30. So with 30 inches per second, or 30 ips, which we'll probably call it from now on, the top end kind of opens up. The top end of the snare kind of has some more length, and it just has a little bit more presence. With 7.5, it's kind of dulled out a little, but in a pleasing way. So you'll have to play with ips on your productions to see what is really going to suit your song. For now, I'm just going to go back to 15, a nice middle of the road. But we want some compression and maybe a little bit of saturation on these drums. I know this is a song that's going to have some distorted guitars, so I want to use some of that saturation to help the drums kind of cut through a little. And since we're using tape, I'm just going to use a little bit of tape compression to help my overall drum sound. So to get tape compression, what you're going to do is go to your input control and just start driving signal into the tape and you'll hear that compression. I'm gonna go crazy for now and really dial it up. And I have my inputs and outputs linked. That's what this little green light is. So I'm just gonna push it way up and you'll hear the compression across all the drums because the kick and snare will kind of get squashed down and the cymbals and all of the sustain will kind of come up. You'll hear this. So we have our drum compression. It's probably a little too much. I'm just gonna go ahead and back it down. Uh, right now, for the way this is going, kind of plus five on my input and you know, subsequently minus five on my output. Give me a nice little spot. So that's where I'm gonna put it for now. Let's go over to saturation. Let's say that we were really driving this signal in and we can kind of just use this without extra compression. We're gonna bring up a lot of the body and the harmonics of everything by using the tape saturation. Let's take a listen to this and I'll just slowly dial it in as we're playing through our drums. So with that saturation, we are kind of losing our dynamics again. But the way that it's working is it's bringing up some of the sustain and the sound. You heard with the saturation very high, we were getting more room sounds from our overheads, our snare within the room, and just the actual room mics in this kit as well. So we were kind of bringing that stuff forward by sacrificing some of our transients. Now, that's why I rolled it back off to give me some more body, give me some more harmonics, but I don't wanna squash my kick and snare. I want those to still be able to cut through. So use these two controls mainly within your productions to get yourself some compression and saturation to help your stuff cut through. Now what I'm also going to do is come over to Stereo Width and just push this up a little bit more. This control is a little hard to see, but there is an icon right here on the head of the control here. It's just this tiny little circle like we used to see on guitar amps. So I'm just going to push my Stereo Width up a little bit, and it's just going to push things out from the sides a little. I'm also not gonna worry about low boost. This would do exactly like you think and kind of boost the low ends. And I'm not gonna mess with the bias at all right now either. 
So with this dialed in, let's take a listen to a before and after. Nice, we have some compression and saturation going on on our drum bus. Now let's switch over to bass. I've already dialed in some stuff for the bass. I'm using Ampire to give me my head and cab, and I also have the Tube Dreamer just kind of giving a little extra grit. And this is followed up by JST's Joel Wanasek Bus Glue Bass. Let me bypass this for now so you can hear what I have with Ampire through just my P bass here. And now let me turn on the JW bass bus. Okay, and now we'll go over to tape face. In the presets, which is underneath presets here, and I'm just gonna turn this on, there's a lot underneath factory presets. When you get into it, there's actually subdivisions in here where you can mess around with the red and white tape, the blue tape, or the gray tape. And that's exactly what it does is it changes the tape style. So you can see on my base, I actually went with the blue because in blue there was already this bass guitar preset that I just modified a little. With Tape Face, I'm doing the same thing. I'm getting just a little bit of compression and a little extra saturation, but this is very, very subtle. I also took the stereo width and dropped it all the way down because it's a bass and I want that right up the middle. So here's a couple bars without, and then I'll drop it in. Very subtle on the bass. We also are at 7.5 ips. We do not have low boost, but we do have the bias cranked up because I want to kind of saturate this tape a little bit more. So I'm cool with this. It's a modified preset. I also have my guitars. The guitars on their own sound like this. On my guitars with Tape Face, all I did was change which tape style I was using, and I was flipping through it. So let's do that right now real quick. We're just going to listen to our guitars, and I'm not going to change anything except the tape style. So we're going to start with blue, we'll go to gray, then back to red and white, and we'll listen to the differences between these three different tape styles. With some material, this is gonna be way more subtle than others. I chose blue for my guitars because it preserves that upper mid range, helping the guitars kind of cut through. When I switched over to gray, it sounded way too dulled out for me. And red and white was just too neutral. I wanted to make sure that the top end or the upper mids of my guitars still had that presence. And the blue tape works perfectly for this. I have a little bit of saturation dialed in and a touch of stereo width. I also dropped the inches per second down uh, to 7.5 because I want to roll off that top end. Remember with a smaller ips, you roll off some of your top end. So that's exactly what I want to do is get rid of any extra hiss that may be way up on top. But you could probably see I'm not boosting the input into the tape to get any kind of extra saturation and our bias is at normal. Last but not least, let's go over to the mix bus because why not put tape on your mix bus? You can do exactly the same thing and give yourself a little bit of compression and saturation across your whole mix. I'm just gonna turn it on right now and we're going with red and white because this is very neutral to my ear and I don't want it to affect anything that I don't want it to affect. 
I also have it at 15 inches per second, not getting any compression or driving the signal into the tape machine at all. And the saturation is really low. We'll probably dial these in as we're listening. But now that we have everything on, why not address and dial in some sounds because everything's working together at this point. So now we can dial in our sounds. So there we go, after dialing in some things, I did a little bit of driving into the tape and got a little bit of tape compression. By my ear, maybe a couple dB, maybe. Then we also dialed up the saturation to just add some extra harmonics in, but it's extraordinarily subtle. I went to the stereo width and just pushed everything out of the sides a little bit more. All right, here it is, exactly what you're probably looking for, the before and after, before. So there you go, that's Tape Face version three from Kive Audio and how tape can be used for compression and saturation, filling out our mix. If you wanna pick up a copy of Tape Face for yourself, use the link down in the description. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For booking information, check out timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.